Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about ancient Chinese numerals. So the ancient Chinese had an advanced civilization, probably about as old as the Greek civilization. And, of course, they had some numerals to go with their uh, mathematics. So, first of all, here the really ancient Chinese numerals were based on the symbols you see in this chart here. Um, there are more than, than what's here, but you can get the idea of what's going on. It was an additive system, but it had a, uh, and so it had no position, no positional value, no place value. And so there's no need for a zero for a placeholder. Um, and it's kind of like uh, the Greek numerals, where you have um, symbols for one through nine, was grouped in tens, like like the uh, like our numbers now, and like the uh, Greeks or the Romans or Egyptians, uh, not like the Babylonians. And so you had symbols for one through nine. Remember, they didn't really need a zero, and then you had different symbols for ten, twenty, thirty, forty, up to ninety. And different symbols for 100, 200, and 500, and whatever. And different symbols of 1,000, 2,000. But, but however, the higher place valued symbols were built out of the symbols for 1 through 9 with a multiplicative component. So look here. Let's just take a column and compare it here. Uh, these are pretty self-explanatory. A, a line for 1, 2 for 2, 3 marks here for 3, 4 for 4. And this kind of a kind of an X looking shape for five. Okay, six look kind of like this. Seven, eight, and then the shape for nine and ten. Now, or nine. Uh, ten was a vertical line. Now, um, look at what happens for twenty. Okay, looks like this. So there's a, if you look, there's some elements here that are kind of like the two. So you see the two things going up. 30 had the three things going up from this little V, v shape. So the V shape is kind of, uh, they're also rotated, it looks like, but this V shape is added to the symbols for two to get 20. It's added to the symbol for three to get 30, rotated as well. Add that to the symbol there. For 50, you just added a vertical thing to it. For 60, you add a vertical thing to that. Okay. So, very similar kind of thing there. For 100, it added this, this uh, symbol here. Kind of, kind of like a circle with a triangle in it, it looks like. It was added to the symbol for 1 to be 100. That symbol was added to the symbol for 2. To be 200, so there's a multiple. That that's basically this symbol says multiply by 100. Okay. For a thousand, they have this symbol for a thousand, and then one slash through it. That's multiplied by one, so 1,000. Two of those would be two times a thousand, so it's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. 5,000 takes the symbol for five and places it right there, inside there. So we have a a multiplicative situ situation inside there. By the way, I'm pulling this information from the Mac Tudor History of Mathematics site. There's a website uh, URL there, and this this uh, this information and this chart comes from there. So it's pretty close to a place value system, but just not quite. Uh, it's not not really positional, uh, but it does have some of the features there. Um, so, for example, if we want to write 254, we take the symbol for 200, the symbol for, oh, this is 264. So, 264 would have the symbol for 200, the symbol for 60, and the symbol for 4, just like we did in, uh, in the Greek numerals, right? But the thing that's a little twist here is that that the uh, 
the symbol for 200 is basically the symbol for 2 and a symbol for 100 sort of merged together. The symbols are a little more complicated than the just the Greek letters, so we have that difference as well. Now, this is a really ancient Chinese, and this was this was as early as say the 14th century BCE, but they had a later another system that came along a little bit later. So by the 4th century BCE, a different system was used. It arose from using straight rods on a counting board. So you had a counting board that had little cells like this down here, and you placed rods in there. So basically, uh, you could have, if you just had, uh, well, several of these rods, you could go ahead and, and uh, make numbers out of these by just placing little, basically little sticks in there. Okay, and all these numbers could be represented. The numbers from 1 to 9 could be represented by 5 or fewer of these little sticks. So uh, 1 could be represented horizontally or vertically as a stick. 2, this way or this way. 3, 4, 5. 6, then you put a horizontal here for 5 and then the vertical one for, well, let's put, I'm sorry, you put the vertical one if these are going horizontal, put a vertical one basically for five and a one going sideways for the extra one for six. So a five and two more makes seven, a five and three more makes eight, and a five and four more makes nine. And then these are these are just basically rotated down here. Uh, this time it's the uh, horizontal one that's five and the vertical one that's one more. Horizontal is five and two more here for a seven and so forth. Now what they did is they took this and then they had a true place value system here. Nine basic symbols with two variations on how they were there, actually 18 symbols really. And they were placed in a, uh, on the board like this. So if you want to put the, the number 1,234, uh, we had four in the units position here. We had three tens. So three there, two hundreds, and one thousand. Notice that they're alternating the first row forms and the second row forms. So if we take the, uh, so uh, with the, whoops, looks like it's the second row form in the ones place. Okay. So the lower row form, it looks like, is in the ones place, and then you go from there. And there's no need for a zero because they could just leave a blank if, they're, uh, if they were missing something. So a blank in the cell meant no ones here. And what is this? This is uh, nine, tens, three, hundreds, no thousands, and six, ten thousands. So notice this is a true place value. And a little bit later on, they would uh, fill these blanks in with a, uh, a placeholder, okay, which is a zero. And they actually even used a little circle for it, like basically like we do for a zero today. And then, of course, you could kind of take away the little background of the grid and write your numerals that way. So notice that this was really a, a base 10 place value enumeration system. So by the first century BCE, they were using this system to represent even decimal numbers as well as, um, as whole numbers. And they understood how easy it was to multiply and divide by powers of 10 in this system. You just basically move everything over one place every time you multiply or divide by 10. By the Middle Ages, they were using decimals negative numbers, and they even had a true concept of zero using the small circle as a symbol for zero. So here's the big question. It's not known if this numeration system influenced Indian numerals, or if maybe the influence went in the other direction, uh, or if these numerals developed independently. Uh, it's most likely that this actually influenced the uh, the Indians to come up with their numeration system, which currently, which led to our modern system, uh, or perhaps they did it independently.
So we'll talk in the next video a little bit about our modern uh, numeration system.